Pakistan is full of well-hidden secrets, but not for these guys. Just look at this place. It is teeming with ducks. This little lake is a paradise for these long-distance travelers. Filming them will not be easy. It is going to take some stealth work. I'll have to wait for the cover of darkness to install the tent because I don't want these ducks to see me doing that. It's nice and level now. This is, I think, done here. Look at this. The birds are using the night as a perch. Oh, oh, a coot, a coot. A coot, I need to be careful. I don't want to blow my cover and these coots are very curious. Here I am in Lung Lake, a little known lake in southern Pakistan. Spreading over just 98 acres, it is not the mightiest and the largest of the lakes, but what it lacks in size, it makes up for in biodiversity. There's actually two reasons why I chose Lung Lake to film ducks. First of all, it is a safe haven for these birds. Hunting is prohibited, so these ducks are relatively calm. Secondly, this is not a large lake, which makes it easier to get close to them while still being on the ground. It is easier said than done. Ducks are after all smacked right in the middle of the food chain. And this raft of ducks is never going to allow me to sneak up on them. Lots of creatures call this place home, like the cormorants, the herons, kingfishers, harriers, and of course, the mongooses. But the reason I'm here is to film the ducks that come here at this time of the year when it gets a little too cold for them in Siberia. Oh, just look at this place. It is teeming with ducks. This lake actually has it all a duck needs to live a happy life. First of all, water, kind of essential for a duck. Then the tall grass, the reeds in which they can hide from the predators and also from the sun when it gets too hot for them here. These guys have traveled thousands of kilometers from Siberia and this must feel good. So here's the plan. I have spotted an island over there which seems like a good place to set up hide. It has shallow waters close to it, which means that the dabbling ducks are gonna come there to feed. In a little distance, there's also deeper waters where I'll probably get the diving ducks. Moreover, it has trees over there which is going to give me the cover that I need to actually camouflage my tent. But for all that to happen, I'll have to wait for the cover of darkness to install the tent because I don't want these ducks to see me doing that because they'll be wary of my presence then. With the chest waiter, boat and hide ready, I wait for the darkness. So this is the place where I'll be setting up my hide. It is a nice place of course, but I do need to get to the eye level of the duck, so I'll have to dig it up a bit and level it so I have a nice eye view of the ducks. It's nice and level now. This is, I think, done here. Ah. So this is going to be my office for the coming weeks where I'll be spending lots of time with beautiful ducks and my thoughts, of course. Well, although this hide is made up of camo cloth, 
ducks are very skittish. So I don't want to take any risks. I'll have to cover it with a grass like this one, a local grass, because otherwise I stand little chance of getting close to ducks. Well, I think I've done a nice job of camouflaging this tent and I hope the ducks are not going to notice it. Of course, they are going to notice it, but in a couple of days, they'll get used to its presence here. And when I come back after a couple of days, they'll be close by here and I'll be able to get close to them. All set, I'm leaving this hide for a couple of days here for the birds to get used to it. It's 5.30 in the morning and the birds have not arrived yet. I'm heading out towards my hide. I've left there for a couple of days and I hope that the ducks have gotten used to it by now. After putting all my gear in the boat, I start pedaling towards my hide. It is a foggy morning and finding the hide proves to be way more difficult than I thought. But after some drifting into unwanted directions, I find the right spot. And then I scurry into my hide. Nice and comfy, not bad. I mean, not that comfy, but it's going to get the job done, I hope. So I need to start setting up the equipment. As I settle and the dawn breaks, I begin to experience the early morning lake atmosphere. There's this calmness in the air that is then broken gently by the calls of its feathery residents. My camera is able to see silhouettes of birds in and out of the fog. Then slowly, the dawn chorus fills the air. As the sun warms up the surroundings, the fog vanishes and I'm able to see better. Despite all my efforts, the hide is not a very easy one to sit in. I really have to hunch to fit into this, but I chose this intentionally. These birds are skittish and I want to be as less conspicuous as I can. I can hear lots of them in the background. I can hear their calls and also see some in the distance. I have to wait for them to come closer. The common teals are the first one to come close. These tiny ducks have returned from their nocturnal feeding grounds. And now is the time for them to rest. A coot, a coot, a coot. I need to be careful. I don't want to blow my cover. And these coots are very, very curious. More than the ducks, actually. These common teals, they have returned from their nocturnal feeding grounds and now is actually the time for them to rest. Even when they are snoozing in groups, the ones stationed as guards sleep with their eye away from the group open. One side of their brain stays awake and the other asleep. Remarkable. See what I'm dealing with here. These are tiny ducks, but they are very agile and can maneuver swiftly. And then the ones with the most bizarre beaks arrive. 
These are northern shovelers. Unlike the teals, the shovelers feed all times of the day. And their beak is specially adapted to spring swimming in vertebrates on the surface of the water. Like the teals, shovelers are also dabbling ducks. Oh. And next to the shovelers, the ones with the pointy, pointy tail. That is actually a pintail. Yep. And it's not surprising where it gets its name from. The upward pointed tail. The shovelers and teams have found something delicious just underneath the surface. And look at them. They look so funny with their bottoms up and heads down just to reach to the delicious food. Now teals, shovelers and pintails, all of them are dabbling ducks, which means that they feed in shallow waters. Then we have the mallards. These are the most abundant and widespread ducks on earth and it is also the ancestor of most domestic ducks. He's certainly beautiful and can make the others jealous with the brilliant greens that ducks favor. This along with the iridescent purples and blues in duck's feathers are a result of tiny crystals in the structure of the feathers that scatter light in specific ways. It is nature's nanotechnology. These intricately patterned and shimmering feathers are watertight. But to keep it functional, these ducks need to invest a considerable time grooming. Now the sun has warmed up the surroundings and these birds are now bathing and taking care of their most prized possession, which are the feathers of course. They are cleaning their feathers to get rid of dirt dust and parasites and after all these feathers keep them warm in chilling temperatures and also give them the buoyancy they need it all starts with a nice bath Then they have to dry their feathers and comb them with careful nibbling and stroking. They dedicate considerable time to the process. From an oil gland at the base of their tail, ducks apply oil to their feathers which keeps them in good health. For male, these feathers serve Another very important purpose, a vital one, to attract females. Oh, look at that. A pochard has joined the party. Pochards are not dabblers. You can tell if a duck is a diver or a dabbler by observing how it takes off from water. I mean, the light bodied dabbling ducks, they can shoot straight up in the air. While as on the other hand, the heavy bodied diving ducks, they need a watery runway to actually get airborne. These are two very different flight plans. Once in the air, ducks have to maintain a fast pace. 
Given the body to wing ratio, ducks need to fly at high speeds to fly at all. But ducks are powerful flyers and are known to fly thousands of kilometers stretching across continents. And for their epic journey back to their breeding grounds, they'll need to muster up all their strength. And for strength, they need a peaceful and safe lake like Lung Lake. So this is the end of filming ducks. Well, I'm sad actually leaving these ducks here, uh, but that's how it is. I have to go. Well, Lung Lake has always been a popular winter destination for these migratory birds. But situation elsewhere in Pakistan is not really encouraging. Habitat loss from development and from climate change are real threats. I mean, moreover, these birds are hunted for sport and their meat is available in the open markets. Even live ducks are available for sale in the open markets. But lakes like these are a step in the right direction for these birds.